The Lightscale Trident is probably the all-around best weapon in Tears of the Kingdom. It is capable of a max attack power of 154, all while being extremely durable and usable in any situation. This guide will cover how to get the Lightscale Trident, get the most out of it, and how to repair it. As usual, useful timestamps can be found in the video description. To get the Lightscale Trident, you will need to speak with Dento in Zora's Domain, located to the east. He can be found next to the General Store. You'll need to complete the main quest in Zora's Domain, where you help to clear the sludge from the surrounding waters before Dento will offer to craft you the Lightscale Trident. Once he does, this will start the quest Glory of the Zora, where we will need to gather the required materials for making the legendary trident. Those materials are 5 flint, 3 diamonds, and 1 Zora spear. The first material, flint, is super easy to find. Just break any mineral deposits you see in caves and you are bound to find it. In fact, the chances are very high that you already have well over 5 flint unless you've been selling it. Next up, 3 diamonds. The surefire way to get 3 diamonds is to buy them in Goron City. Gon Goron at the city center will sell 3 diamonds per day. However, they are 1000 rupees each and he will only sell them once you've completed the main quest in Goron City. Because of that, here are 4 locations each with a guaranteed single diamond. The first is in Hyrule Castle. Glide north from Lookout Landing Skyview Tower and land on the balcony overlooking the outer gate. Once there, find and open the metal grate and drop down to find this diamond. The second diamond is located within the Jinodok Shrine. I got to it by using the Hyrule Field Skyview Tower, then outfitting a nearby floating platform with rockets, but fans would work as well. All that's left is to retrieve the Shrine Crystal, which you can do pretty easily by rotating this platform to bridge the two islands. Diamond number 3 is located in the Mauika Shrine, southwest of the Upland Zorana Skyview Tower. It's within a cave and the easiest way to reach it is by landing on top of the cave, then entering through the giant skull. The shrine is to the north once you drop in. The final diamond is at the Yomazuk Shrine. This shrine is located within a cave on the east coast of Hyrule. The cave's entrance is on the south side of Lodrum Headland near Tarn Point. Drop in and find your way across the waterlogged cave to reach this shrine. There is one more source of potential diamonds, any stone talus. They have a low probability of dropping diamonds when defeated, and there are plenty of them in the depths. The last material we need is a Zora Spear, and it can be either the Gloom Corroded or Sparkling variety. I know of two guaranteed locations for Zora Spears. The first is right next to Upland Zorana Skyview Tower. There, a Zora is trapped in muck. If you free him, he will give you a Zora Spear as a reward. The second guaranteed Zora Spear is a short distance to the south of the Skyview Tower near Rallus Pond. You'll find a chest to the west of the pond containing this spear. If you've already gotten and broken those Zora Spears, you do have other options. The first is the like enemies found in many caves. They always drop one or two weapons when defeated. So you can go to a cave, preferably one in Zora's domain, and save before defeating one of these enemies. If it doesn't drop the Zora spear, you can reload the last save and defeat it again. You can keep doing this until you get a Zora Spear.
The other option is to go look for one in the depths. Specifically, there are two paths that carve through the depths beneath Zora's domain, and they are lined with Zora statues. One of these paths starts at the bottom of the Lanairu Wetlands Chasm. and the other starts at the bottom of the East Hill Chasm. Both paths converge at the abandoned Lanairu Mine. Along these paths are plenty of shadow figures standing on raised stone platforms, each holding a sparkling weapon. These shadow figures are scattered all over the depths, but many of those along the Zora paths carry spears, and those spears are frequently Zora spears. Following these two paths, I was able to find a total of four Zora Spears and I marked them on my map with sword stamps. While those specific shadow figures might not be holding Zora Spears in your world, you will most likely find at least one shadow figure that is holding a Zora Spear while going along those paths. Once you have all the required materials, head back to Dento to craft the Trident. The light scale Trident has a base attack power of 22 damage. However, its intrinsic trait will have it dealing double damage whenever you are wet, and that bonus extends to any material fused to it. With the Silver Lionel Saberhorn fused to the Light Scale Trident, it has a total attack power of 154 whenever wet. Without spoiling too much, completing the Zora main quest, a prerequisite to getting the Trident, will give you an ability that lets you maintain the wet status at all times in any environment. If you need high attack power fuse materials, I have a whole guide on how to get them and I will link it near the bottom of this video's description. In addition to its very high damage potential, this trident is as tough as the diamonds it was made with. I was able to mow through an entire village of black and silver tier enemies without it breaking or becoming badly damaged. It is essentially the Hylian shield of weapons. If it does break, or if you otherwise lose it, then Dento will craft another for you, assuming you can bring him the same materials. That being said, it is much easier to repair this weapon through the Rock Octorox near Death Mountain using a simple trick. First, if you don't want to lose the fused material on the Trident, take it to the Break Apart shop in Terrytown, and have it broken apart for 20 rupees. Next, grab the unfused trident along with any unfused non-legendary weapon such as a stick and bring them to a rock octorock. I marked the location of around 20 near Death Mountain on my map. I like going to the Momosik Shrine because there are three octoroks near it. To repair a normal weapon, all you need to do is drop it in front of a rock octorock. It will inhale it, repair, and even upgrade it before violently spitting it back at you. However, the Light Scale Trident is considered a legendary weapon, and the Rock Octoroks will reject it and spit it back out immediately without repairing it, so we need to trick them. The way we do this is by dropping the Trident on the ground and fusing it to a non-legendary weapon or shield such as a stick or knight sword. Funnily enough, the Hylian Shield is also not considered legendary and will work for this, so I fused the Trident to the Hylian Shield, then fed it to the Rock Octorok. Doing that, the Rock Octorok will then repair and upgrade the Hylian Shield or any other non-legendary weapon, and the fused weapon, our Trident, will also be repaired. It just won't be given any upgrade. As a final note, if you need to do this again, know that a given Octorok will only repair one item per Blood Moon, so you'll need to go to a different Octorok if you need more repairs before then. The last step is to bring the item with the Trident fused to it back to the Break Apart shop in Terrytown pay the 20 rupee fee, and recover the fully repaired light scale trident. If you want to see more great guides, you can head over to my channel, and if you're new, consider subscribing. You're helping me feed my cat, her name's Marshmallow. Have a great day, if you're here today, have a great Saturday, and a great weekend, and as always, thanks for watching.